I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. In the beginning, there was the tiny whoop, and it was small and nimble, and you could zip around your living room and pretend you shrunk yourself down to the size of a Hot Wheels car, and it was awesome. But those stupid brushless motors wore out so fast, and it wasn't really fast and powerful, and doing acro with a tiny whoop was kind of hard. So then came brushless tiny whoops, and they didn't just run on one cell batteries, but two cell and sometimes even three cell batteries, and they were fast and powerful, and you could do acro and race with them, and in some ways they were just the best of both worlds, but there was one thing you couldn't do with even a 2S brushless tiny whoop, and that is carry a GoPro. You were still stuck with that stupid freaking DVR video, and... Let's just face it, folks, none of our moms are impressed by that stupid, grainy DVR video. Never mind if you're trying to make actual, like, professional footage with one of these little quads. And that's why what we're looking at today is so exciting. This is the Mobula 7 HD. It's a Mobula 7 in that it's a 75 millimeter brushless can we even call this a tiny whoop anymore? It runs on a three cell battery for gosh sakes. But let's call it a brushless tiny whoop with a Cadex Turtle high definition DVR FPV camera on board. And that means that now you can super impress your mom with your awesome DVR footage. <laughs> Stick to it. <laughs> Folks, I have a confession to make. Uh, if you notice that this video is a little bit more concise and to the point than some of my other videos, it's because I already finished this whole freaking review and I recorded the whole freaking review with this camera out of focus. And because I am taking my job seriously, I am not just, I was so tempted to just go, uh, they could still watch it. The information's still there, but no. I'm re-recording this video, but unlike most of my videos, I already know what I want to say about this quad because I've already said almost all of it. And the place where I want to start is by comparing the Mobula 7 HD to some of the other quads that I've flown that are sort of similar to it. So let's compare it to the Mobula 7, the not HD version. This is the Yashin trash can, and this is the Beta FPV 75X. And the first thing we'll do is we'll compare them based on their weight, because the weight of these quads significantly affects how they fly, and that significantly affects what you can do with them. So the Mobula 7 HD, with its 300 milliamp hour three cell battery, comes with it from the factory, is 71 grams. 71 grams. If you compare that to the regular Mobula 7, with its two... These are 255 milliamp hour packs. It comes in around 42 grams. And if we do that same comparison with the trash can, which is a little heavier, it comes in at about 48 grams. So the Mobula 7 HD is a little less than twice as heavy as these two other quads. And if we compare to the Beta 75X with its factory 2S 350 milliamp hour pack, it comes in at 62 grams. So it's very close to the same weight as the Beta 75X. And that comparison extends not just to the weight, but also to the motors. The Mobula 7 and the trash can have 0802 and 0803 motors respectively. That means they're eight millimeters in diameter and two or three millimeters tall. By comparison, the Mobula 7 HD has 1102 motors. That's 11 millimeters in diameter. So these motors are significantly bigger. And that means they're gonna make more thrust to help overcome the additional weight. And in fact, I feel like the power to weight ratio of these quads is roughly the same. The Mobula 7 HD is heavier, but also more powerful. And those two things kind of balance out. Kind of, but not really. Because a heavier quad with the same power to weight ratio as a lighter quad does not fly the same. It doesn't corner as nimbly and it carries its weight more through turns and all that's a both a positive and a negative. If you're trying to do acro moves where you fling yourself over an obstacle, that's actually way better to do with a heavier quad. 
The Mobula 7 HD actually makes a much better acro quad in, in a lot of ways than something like the trash can or the Mobula 7 because it's going to behave more like a bigger, heavier quad and you're going to have to do less manual adjustment for the, for the, for the lack of mass. On the flip side, when you try and fly the Mobula 7 HD indoors, that turn on a dime sharpness that you get from these sm smaller, lighter quads, it just isn't there. And so the Mobula 7 HD really excels outdoor for fast cruising or even light acro. It is flyable indoors. I found that about a 75% throttle cut was perfect. Uh, with a 75% throttle cut, it flies okay indoors, but uh, you can even race it. But it just doesn't have the same just razor precision of some of the lighter quads like, well, the Mobula 7 the trash can, or especially even lighter quads like the Tiny Hawk. The Mobula 7 HD has several improvements compared to the Mobula 7. The video transmitter has been improved. It's got 200 milliwatts of output power now, where the original Mobula 7 only went to 25 milliwatts. And that additional output power gives you a substantial increase in range and penetration compared to the Mobula 7. Another nice feature of the video transmitter on the Mobula 7 HD is that it has indicator LEDs here to show you the band and channel that you're on. And there's also a push button that lets you change the band and channel. Although of course, the video transmitter supports, supports smart audio like most of them do today. Like the trash can, the Mobula 7 HD also has an F4 processor on its flight controller. The original Mobile 7 only had an F3, and this is good news because Betaflight 4.0 will be the last version of Betaflight to support the F3 processor. The F3s just don't have enough program memory to hold all of the stuff that Betaflight wants to put in. And in fact, F3 processors today have actually had features dropped out. I can't I think it was in Betaflight 3.4 where they first started doing that. So your F3s are already feeling the squeeze, and after Betaflight 4.0, they won't be supported at all anymore. So it's nice that this, is a, this has an F4. There's a little bit of future proofing there, although by the time Betaflight 5.0 comes out, will you even still have this quad? It'll probably be at the bottom of a lake somewhere in the top of a tree. Depends on how long you keep your quads. Like all brushless quadcopters today, the ESCs on the Mobile 7 HD support D-Shot, and that means that they support D-Shot commands, specifically turtle mode. Turtle mode is what lets your quadcopter reverse its motors and flip itself back over again when you crash and it's upside down. And this is just a lifesaver. If you're outdoors, it's great for getting yourself out of trees. If you're indoors and you've crashed upside down under the couch, it's, e it's great for flipping it over and retrieving it. It's just absolutely a must. And actually, it's one of the biggest reasons why brushless Tiny Whoops are better than brushed ones. As much as I love those little brushed Tiny Whoops like the Acro B or the actual Tiny Whoop, the fact that they don't have turtle mode is like that alone is enough to kind of turn me off on them. Having to walk over and pick them up and get my butt up off the couch is so freaking annoying. So yeah, that's the ESCs. So then we come to the most significant part of the Mobula 7 HD, which is the camera. And the camera on it is the Cadex Turtle, which is a high definition DVR that records on board and it transmits regular analog video back to your goggles. And the Cadex Turtle has been widely reviewed and whether you love it or hate it, it's really a personal thing. In a, in a sense, though, whether you love it or hate it doesn't matter. And this starts bringing us to the conclusions of this review, which is that there are some things about the Mobula 7 HD that you may not love, like it could be lighter or, you know, it, but the thing is, there's only so many quads out there that actually deliver this package, high definition recording in a quad that flies half decent. And so in some sense, if you don't love the image from the Cadex Turtle, you're going to kind of just live with it because it's not like you're going to be slapping a GoPro on this thing. The bottom line is I'm going to show you the footage and you can decide for yourself. And the first thing you're going to see is that the audio is completely useless as soon as you start flying. I've turned down the volume on that to avoid killing your ears too freaking much. The microphone is still useful when you're before you take off. You can like say, hey, this is flight number one, or you could use it to sync up your DVR, or there are various things that it's good for. But as soon as you take off, those motors scream and the audio is just useless. So do us all a favor if you post these videos to YouTube to, to put music on it, turn the audio off.
As far as the image quality goes, I got to say it's pretty freaking good. Uh, the resolution looks nice. The color looks nice, but not super oversaturated. The dynamic range, it does have kind of a wide dynamic range look with slightly lighter shadows. I think that's really good for the FPV feed. Not everybody's going to like how that looks. Uh, in, in the HD feed, but you can always tweak that a little bit in your video editing program, or it is an option you can turn off in the camera if you want to change how the, it looks in the goggles as well. As far as how the quad flies, what, what I'm doing here is what I call sort of fast cruising. It's not super fast. I'm not doing any acro flippy floppies, but it really highlights how this little quad can be used to get kind of smooth, dare I say, cinematic footage. I don't know. It's, it's reasonably smooth. We're not getting like a ton of jello. You could totally use this footage for a certain type of video that you sort of need to get. And then it dropped out of the sky because unfortunately this Crazy BF4, like all the others, has the lockup bug where if you bind it in D16 mode with telemetry enabled, it just freezes up some of the time and your quad falls out of the sky for no reason. So go into Betaflight and go to the configuration tab and turn telemetry off and that will fix this. Or you can bind in D8 mode if you prefer, but turning telemetry off has fixed it for me. Here's a very brief uh, acro flight. I actually started it on a not fully charged battery. And what I want you to see here is that the view you get in the FPV is exactly the same as the view you get from the HD. Unlike some of the early versions of the Runcam split, where you got a much smaller field of view in the, in the FPV camera, that is not the case here with the Cadex Turtle. You're basically seeing the exact same thing. If you're in 4.3 mode, it just slices off the edges. If you're in 16.9 mode, the field of view is identical. Here's another outdoor flight. The sun is a little lower in the sky and presenting a little bit more of a challenging lighting condition for the camera to deal with. I'm also putting the DVR down in the lower right so you can see, number one, how the video quality is on the stock 200 milliwatts with the stock di linear dipole antenna. Also, notice in the lower right-hand corner of the screen is the RSSI, and that should give you some idea of the approximate range that you're going to get off of this guy. The range was big enough to fly my whole yard without getting low RSSI, but not much more than that. So the range is not exceptional, I would say. Not exceptional. Certainly not up to like a full range receiver like an RXSR or something like that. The camera is doing a pretty freaking good job of handling the light exposure. With the sun low in the sky, a lot of cameras would get really dark and you would just not be able to see anything on the ground. The camera is definitely not doing that. Even in the DVR feed, you have lots of shadow detail, even as the sun comes into the sky in a situation like this. It, it, I think the camera is doing a really good job of dealing with all the changing lighting conditions. Um, there is a little bit of digital image noise, which is sort of natural with a CMOS sensor camera like you're seeing here. A little bit of sort of shimmery magenta. Uh, that's something that a lot of people are going to hate and there's just no way around it with a camera like this with the HD camera. There just I don't think there are any high definition CCD sensors so you're just going to have to deal with that. I should acknowledge that we are looking at a DVR. We are not looking at a live Fat Shark screen and as a result the image you're seeing is breaking up more than I was seeing in the goggles. So this is not a perfect range test, um, but I would say that the rate, the video range on this at 200 milliwatts is not quite as good as some of the other transmitters I've had at 200 milliwatts, but still, uh, well, when you look at how the RSSI is getting low as I get down to the corner of the property, I'll say this, the video range is definitely longer than the controlling range. <laughs> Here's some video of the Mobula 7 HD flying indoors in my little race course that I set up. Um, I am flying in angle mode here and I'm flying with a 75% throttle scale. I've got a video showing you how to set that up if you want to in the Betaflight command line. I'll put a link to that video down in the video description. As I mentioned earlier, the quad, it can make its way around the course and with a little bit of adjustment on the pilot's part, it can do an okay job, but it just doesn't, I felt it especially right here coming into this getting my altitude just right to go through this sequence of gates near the root near the ceiling was just really challenging to manage the throttle and to handle the weight of the quad you can see i'm picking up a fair amount of speed but i'm just not as precise on these little turns and oh i'm, I'm high i'm low it's it's just that 
I guarantee you, if I did like 20 more packs, I would start to really get it dialed in and I could make it look good. But I think those first couple packs you fly when you're not used to it actually really bring out the, the characteristics of the quad relative to the other quads I've been flying, like the smaller, lighter ones. So it can work indoors. Video looks good, both the DVR and the high definition video. I think they look freaking great, frankly. Maybe even better than outdoors. Oh, it went down behind the door. <laughs> you know, when you get the Mobula 7 HD, there are a couple things that I recommend you change about the setup. And the first one has to do with the Cadex Turtle camera that we've been looking at. So I'm going to unplug the battery. Make sure your, your quad is unplugged. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to fish out this green and black wire with a plug on the end of it. I'll just use the tweezers to fish that out. They've helpfully stuffed that up in there. And I'm going to use this camera joystick that they have included. And that's what you use to adjust the Cadex uh, Turtle camera. I'm going to plug in. And I'm going to press that button. And that's going to bring this menu up. If that doesn't bring the menu up, you, it won't, the menu won't come up when the Cadex is recording. So if it's recording, stop recording. And the button that you use to start and stop recording is right here. Okay. So I'm press that button to bring up this menu. And... The first thing I noticed when I got this quad is that it comes with the OSD turned off. And if for some reason your OSD is on, you don't need the Cadex Turtles OSD to show you voltage and flight time. You've got Betaflight OSD for that. This is where you'll turn it off and I'll just press up on the joystick a few times and this will be where you turn off the voltage and turn off the time. I was really impressed that they shipped it from the factory with this turned off. I got another quad recently. Here it is. It was the Happy Model uh, no, it was the full speed Tiny Leader HD and it came from the factory with the Turtles OSD turned on. And I was like, well, that's kind of silly. Why are you not using that? So we're going to turn that off and we're going to exit. Oh, it's already off. It's probably already off. We'll exit out of there and we'll go into video. And this is where you're going to want to turn auto recording on. Now I've already turned mine on. This comes from the factory off. And as a result, you have to go in and you have to manually press this button every time you start flying and want to record. Well, I don't know about you, but as soon as I plug in the battery, I just want the darn thing to start recording. Makes sense to me. So I'm going to turn auto recording on. And I like to have wide dynamic range on. Let me just show you the difference here. Wide dynamic on and off. And you can see that having wide dynamic range off makes the shadows darker. You might turn wide dynamic range off if you're going for like a more cinematic look. But I think as a pilot, having wide dynamic range on is really superior because it gives you better shadow detail. And you can always go into post and, and darken down the shadows a little bit anyway. So I would like, I prefer to fly with wide dynamic on. And that is how it comes from the factory. As far as resolution goes, we can change the resolution 1080p 60, 1080p 30, and even 720p 120 frames per second. So if you wanted to do some slow-mo stuff, you could actually do that. I'm going to leave this at 1080 60. If you have a small SD card, maybe you'd want to turn this down to 1080 30 and, and save yourself some data rate, but SD cards are pretty cheap these days. The image effect menu is where you can change the brightness, sharpness, contrast, and so forth. And if you didn't like the way that that image looked coming out of the camera, this would be where you could try to tweak it a little bit. It has a very saturated sort of little bit of an unnatural look. And you may be able to tweak this a little bit to get it to look a little more natural. The TV system comes set as NTSC. You can switch that to PAL. The difference is that NTSC has slightly higher frame rate and slightly lower resolution. PAL has slightly slower frame rate, but slightly higher resolution. Some FPV pilots prefer PAL because they feel that the higher resolution lets them see details more and that they don't really notice the higher frame rate. Don't worry about the fact of, well, I live in the United States, so I have to use NTSC. That only goes for like real broadcast television. You can use whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. The last of these settings that I would suggest you look at is the aspect ratio or TV ratio. And you can see that I've got mine set to 4.3. It comes from the factory set to 16.9. And that's an interesting choice because most of us are flying with our goggles set to 4.3. We have 4.3 screens in our goggles. There are very few goggles these days that have a 16.9 screen, at least recent ones. Although many of the 
box goggles used by people just getting into the hobby or people on a tighter budget, many of those box goggles do have 16.9 widescreen screens. If your goggles are 16.9, you can set this to 16.9. If they're 4.3, then personally, I want the image to match what I'm seeing in my goggles. I would set it to 4.3. If you have it set to 16.9 and your goggles are 4.3, you will get a squished view. So you'll get more horizontal field of view, but it'll be squished down. And that is especially noticeable when you do things like snap rolls. The horizon kind of goes as you roll and it's really disorientating. Mm, That's up to you. You can fly whichever one you like. Regardless of which of these you choose, the image recorded on the DVR is going to be 1080 1080 resolutions widescreen. So it only affects what you see in the goggles, not what's recorded. And that brings us to the end of the review where we have to ask the question, should you buy it? And it's actually pretty easy to answer that question because like I hinted at earlier in the review, there just isn't that much else out there that accomplishes what this little quad accomplishes. So if we ask ourselves what other HD, but there's going to be a lot of these coming out. They're coming. But as of right now, what else out there is an HD capable 75 ish millimeter brushless quad? Well, there is the Tiny Leader HD, which I have actually tested and flown and I basically decided not to review it. Um, it never flew good for me. I didn't have enough sort of power to be good at acro. And when I was like, okay, well, maybe it's good for flying smooth. And it was just kind of twitchy all over the place when I tried to fly it smooth. So I didn't like how it flied. And then very shortly after I got it, it just died. So not so much for the full speed. (laughs) Okay. What are you doing there, buddy? What are you doing there? Why are you turning off? Don't turn off. Oh man, I'm going to be so sad. If my freaking light has just died. Oh, hallelujah. It was just the plug came out. If you're looking for a tiny whoop that can capture HD video, I think the Mobula 7 HD is the one to pick. At least today, at least until a week from now when the next great thing comes out. It flies pretty good. When flown smoothly, it's pretty smooth and pretty fast, especially if you max the up tilt. When we fly at acro, it has enough weight outdoors for acro to kind of fling and with a little bit of oomph, you can kind of make it fly like a bigger quad. And indoors, it really doesn't excel. But what else is going to capture HD video of you flying underneath your chairs and tables and tiny whooping at a So I wouldn't take this guy to any tiny whoop races. I don't think you're going to win because the weight is going to hurt you more than the power helps you. But if you want high def video, there's really not a lot else out there that can do it. There you go. That's my final word on the Mobula 7 HD. If you want a tiny whoop that captures HD video for about 150 bucks, there you go. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.